I'm going to be showing you how to create a whack-a-mole game like this, like an arcade. So you whack the whack-a-mole and you whack it and you try to whack as many as you can within the time limit of 30 seconds. Um, it's a little bit hard, but you can make it harder or easier depending on what your reaction time is. And yeah, I'm going to be showing you how to make it. So first, um, open up a new Scratch project. and um, create a new sprite, paint it, call it the mole, because you're going to be whacking the mole. So first what you want to do is you want to create a costume for the mole. One for when it's in the hole and one for when it's out of the hole. I'm just going to do um, pretty bad art because um, I'm not very good at art, but I can um, just sketch up something. It doesn't really matter the art. It's okay if it's not the greatest. Um, just make a little hole for my mole, and then make the mole itself. It might not look like a mole, but it's okay. And the mole itself. Make it that color. Make the bottom flat. And delete the outline. Had two little ears. And then finally, just two little eyes. Some black. This is very basic. And then now we're going to make one for in the hole which is basically just this deleted because it's in the hole. So I'm going to name this one out of hole and this one in hole. Now what you need to do is you need to create a cloning script to clone all of them. So when green flag clicked, we can first show and we're just going to create a simple script to clone them across a grid. So, first, set x to 100, negative 140. I think that's good for my size of the sprite. And then clone it. It's going to be it's going to be a five by four grid. So repeat five times. Create a clone of myself. And change x by 70, which is the width of this sprite around, plus the spacing. So now when I click the green flag, it creates a little grid. Now this isn't perfect. I think I need to make it, um, I don't think this is really that well. I think I need to change it a little bit. So what I'm, actually no, it's fine. Cause I need to hide it. Cause this one, is the actual sprite and these are the ones that are cloned so at the end of it I'm gonna hide so now it has the grid and then we need to do this all the way up and down too so what you can do is repeat that four times because it's going to be four vertical rows four rows but then each time you want to move down a little bit so change y by negative 70. But in the beginning, you also want to set the y up to here again. So set y to 90. And now it creates um, a grid of moles, which I think looks good. If I switch to this, you see all the moles. Now, if you can see, it's not running fast. It's kind of running kind of slow. But to speed that up, you can use a custom block. Now, custom blocks can run really fast if you click this little option. So create a new custom block, click that option, and name it clone fast, because that's what it's doing. It's cloning fast. So drag that into here and get the clone fast block out. And now it's now it should clone in the blink of an eye. And it's not taking any time whatsoever, except for one frame. So now that we have that, 
um, we, what we need to do next is actually make it so that when you can bang them on the head and to make them come out. So when I start as clone forever, you want to switch the costume to in the hole because they're all going to be starting in the hole. You don't want them to all be out of the hole unless you do, but you probably don't. You want to make it a random chance every frame to get out of the hole. So what I can do is if this is how you do a random chance is with a random um, number operator, random 1 to 800, which is 1 out of 800 chance every frame that it'll this will happen. Switch to costume out of hole. And wait um, a random amount of time. Now, you can adjust this to your liking, but for me, I'm going to choose 0 0.6 to 1.4. And I think that's good. So now if you click on this, they're going to be randomly popping out of a hole. But if I click on them, they don't they don't mock and they don't go away really. To make them go away, you can use when sprite clicked. And if if we're out of the hole, so we, we can't bong them, we can't bong them on the head when they're in the hole because they're in the hole. We need to only check if they're out of the hole. Where you can check that is if costume name is out of hole, which is I, what I named my costume. You might have named it different, so you need to check which costume name is out of hole and put it there. Um, you can switch to costume in hole. Now if I click on them, they go back in the hole. But there's not really any, you don't really know if they're going in the hole. It doesn't really, there's no sound effects or anything that makes it you know that they're going in the hole. So delete this pop sound, choose a sound. I'm going to choose a bong, a low boing sound. And um, I think that's the good sound. And I'm going to add it, start sound low boing. And now they're going to go in the hole. And you can hear the sound. It adds a little bit of oomph. But to make it even more dramatic, you can create a new costume that plays a little animation of this little guy getting hit on the head. Now I'm going to squish him and add some little red lines to make it show that he's being bonked. Add some red lines. and create some more red lines and just one more maybe so now it'll show that he's being bonked on the head so I'm going to name this bonked so we can instead before switching to costume in hole we can um, we can switch to the costume bonked which is over here. So we switch to the bonked costume and then go in the hole. But if you'll notice, it's not showing because we're doing it right after another and we need some wait time in between. So what we can do is drag the low boing back up and wait a little bit before we show it back going into the hole. So I'm going to wait 0 0.7 seconds. I think that's on the time I want. Now it's going to show it being bonked on the head. Now this is the basis of the game, but we also want a score. Now adding a score is pretty easy. We need to create a variable called score and show it for everything, for all sprites. In the beginning, in the beginning score will be zero and it'll be like that. But if we back into the moles, we'll change the score. And I'm going to make it um, a large readout. I like that style better. And when we bonk it, we want it to change the score. 
and I'm going to change it by like a random amount just to make it feel more, you know, random, not just going up by 100 every single time. So I'm going to choose a value from 90 to 110. From 90 to 110. And now the score starts at zero, but when I bonk them, eh, it changes. But we could keep getting scores forever and ever and ever. So we also want to change that. We want to have a timer or a countdown. So we can have something that says time left. And I'll make a variable called time left for all sprites. I think it's better if it's down here. And the time left will basically be a timer. So in the background, because this is more of like a game state, I put all my game stuff to manage the game in the background. I reset timer, because this is going to be copying the timer. And I am going to... I'm going to check if the, if the timer is more than 30. If the timer is more than 30, I'm going to stop everything, because that means we've run out of time. If it's more than 30, then we've run out of time, basically. That's the amount of seconds that it should be. But you can make the you can make it longer or shorter, depending on how you like it. And this, if you see, if we show timer, it's gonna show it's not gonna show the time we have left, it's gonna show just the timer. And we don't know how much time we have left, we just see the timer. That's why you created this variable. What we can do is set the time left to the time we have minus the timer. So set time left to 30, which is the time minus timer. And now it'll do that. And also stop all when the timer is too big. I'm going to hide timer again because we don't need to show that. Hide. Eh. Hide. Ah. Okay, finally. The timer hit. So now we have a time limit. Can bonk them on the head. Bonk. 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 So, and when it stops, everything will stop and it will show you your final score and the timer will stop. So, also name this mole. Um, we can also add something to make it more realistic. You can add a hammer. So paint a new costume. I'm going to name this one hammer. And I'm going to make it just like a regular, kind of like Thor's hammer, I guess. Kind of like um, you know, the sledgehammer, yeah. And I'm going to make a gray sledgehammer. So just a gray box. With some dark gray background. And another dark gray box. This time, this is going to be the handle. This is a bit big. Maybe it's smaller. And also make the handle go to the back, because we don't want the handle to be on the top. So now we have our little hammer. And we make the... We make the... The the bottom of the hammer this point at the center because that's where you'll be clicking and this is going to be the when the hammer is bonking or going down so i'm going to name this down and then i'm going to create one that's when the hammer is up so when the hammer is up but you want to just rotate it because <clears throat> you want to keep it you want to keep it so that it rotates it rotates like this along this along this point center point and not along this point so you want to move a little bit so this is down and when it's up so i'm going to name this up and we're going to make it always go to the mouse pointer. And we need to make it go to the mouse pointer, so just forever go to mouse pointer. And it also needs to go to the front layer. We don't want it to be behind the mole. And also, we need to have it so that if we press the mouse, it's going to show that it's bonking. And if we don't press the mouse, it's going to show that it's just being held in the air. So if the mouse is 
down, we can switch to the costume down. But if the mouse is just not down, oops, then we can switch to the up costume. So now, bonk, bonk, bonk. It's a bit slow, but it works. Next, we need to create a high score variable. We'll call this high, high score. Make it a cloud variable, this is really important. Cloud, that means that it can be changed by everyone. Only use numbers, yeah, yeah, yeah. And high score is zero now. And when we start the game, we don't want to show because it, it kind of blocks everything. But when the game is done, we want to show it. So the high score will only be zero now. But we want to make it if someone gets a score higher than the high score, then we um, change the high score. So if the person gets a score more than the high score, then we set the high score to that score. So it'll be like that. Now we have a high score. So now it should work. If we click one of these, Okay, now we have, that's our game. High score I got was 501. Okay, and name this final thing, name it Whack-a-Mole. Whack, whack, whack a mole. And um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, I hope this is useful to you so you can create your own Whack-a-Mole game. And um, goodbye.